Did you just invite me out to dinner? Yeah. See you tomorrow. Why in the world would I want to have dinner with you? Oh, sure, here. Sorry, I sweat when I eat. Of course, once I knew that there was a love interest um, brewing, I recognized that maybe we would have flirtations. And Hi. Thanks for the rhythm with this guy. See what wine dinner can buy? Hmm, I was worried there. I thought it'd be two dinners. Well, I'll check my fee schedule. You might see Sylvia in a different light. You remind me of my father. Is that a plus or a minus? Plus. It, with Sylvia and Andy as Andy's stuff, that first season, it was so tender and tentative, and I, I have such affection for it. Put it in my letter. I've been a good girl all year. <laughs> Do you have plans later? I wouldn't make very good company. Um, I don't think tonight is any good. Andy, we are running out of nights of the week that might be good. If you're not careful, I'm going to start taking this personally. Big night tonight, huh? Sylvia coming over? <laughs> Man, you're not going to believe what happened there, John. I got to tell you about that. What are you laughing about? Another problem with your apartment? Morning of the big night, huh, Andy? Are you ready for me to come over? Listen, uh, I have a very bad gas leak. It's pretty easy to look at the char character of Sipwitz and, and um, you know, just on, on, the, uh, on the surface see um, his trouble with women and uh, what his difficulty is in trying to come to terms with uh, his, his lack of uh, his understanding of... Um, love in general. I don't know exactly why I took her out. Whatever it was, it's over, nothing happened, and uh, I'm gonna feel lousy if it messes us up. Don't quit on me now. Uh, seeing a hard-nosed character uh, like that who is, seems completely and utterly gruff and uh, no soft edges and there's nothing there to be found and finally when you crack through that that real rough exterior and you find this little, this this really soft heart underneath it and this this gruff guy you know kind of uh, turns into mush at, at, at certain times uh, that that possibly becomes appealing <clears throat> I also didn't think that they would necessarily put um, Sipowitz in a romantic, um, sexualized circumstance, but I'm very glad they did. So you want to hit sack? I'd like it if you kissed me. They had romance, but they weren't glamorous. They had love, but it wasn't just about a hot passion. They had a depth that allowed you to trust your investment in them because you recognized that it wasn't based on um, fleeting hormones or a lack of experience. It was everything that was awkward and tender and real. I'm getting a new bed cover. I've got it on order. And in, I believe, the, the hearts and minds of an audience who became very attached to that show. People who are, who are mature, who, who have some experience themselves, who understand and appreciate the complexity of an unlikely and yet very true love. Happy birthday, Detective Metavoy. <laughs> Metavoy says thanks. The chemistry between Metavoy and Abandando worked well I think it worked well because they one they were just such an unlikely pair um, I got the script and that was the script where I met Abandando where she was introduced now or never met a boy Andy, 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 wait. And as I was reading the episode, because I love to read the episode and not look ahead, and I, I read it like the viewer, you know, like I'm seeing it for the first time. And I, I saw this, you know, this babe 
coming in, and I thought, wouldn't that be interesting? How was your birthday lunch? Oh, right. My character, Donna Avendando, was so warm and so accepting of um, human foibles. I, I used to know someone enjoyed uh, uh, ice skating, you know, uh, c uh, couple skating. I'm going tomorrow after work. Is that right? Maybe sometime you'd like to come with me. His stutter, stammer, and, or his, you know, imperfections became uh, um, attractive to her. I got... I got... I, I'm sorry, Donna. Oh, don't worry about your stutter. Hi. What are you doing here? I was actually pleased with the way they handled me leaving my wife, uh, going, showing up on Abandando's doorstep. I, uh, I wanted to tell you that uh, I've moved out of my house. I've left my wife. And then suddenly having misgivings about it. Your family loves you. Yeah. How are you doing with all that? Awful. So that within that episode, I, I actually moved in with her and then moved out. 15th Detective Squad. Just a second, please. Detective Metavoy. It's your daughter. I, I became guilt-ridden. I, I, uh, I was dealing with, with my, my two daughters. Hi. One of them wouldn't speak Jamie? to me. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, honey. Oh, I miss you, too. I was dealing with... Uh, with my ex-wife trying to um, <clears throat> reason with me. No, I, I, I can't. Not tonight. Marie, come on. And finally I said, you know, this, this just isn't going to work out, and I'm sorry. Marie says she really wants to try. She says that uh, I didn't give her a fair chance, that I didn't express myself how unhappy I was. I mean, uh, I know I got problems in that area, you know, saying what's on my mind. <laughs> Not with me. And it was a very, that, that was a very painful scene. There's no way we can see each other romantically if you're back with your wife. I know. Where I had to say goodnight to her. You may be the best thing that ever happened to me, Dad. Good night, Greg. But then say, I'll see you tomorrow. You know, I'll be back here tomorrow and we have to face each other. And then eventually we, we found each other again. First I, I catch Marie in the act, then I nearly get whacked. I better watch out for falling pianos, huh? For a wonderful arc. I, I don't know exactly what makes couples click sometimes. I guess they all skate together, huh? I'm just gonna finish my coffee now. Yeah. You know, on TV or off, it's just something happens. Any regrets? No, no regrets. I don't know if I should uh, ring this bell or not, but there was a romance that came out of the first year of, of NY that was kind of fun. Yeah, for some reason, while uh, we were shooting my first episode, they ran out of trailer space, <laughs> and they decided they'd stick us together, and it hasn't changed in nine years or almost ten years. Now, we, Amy and I, are here together at the same time because we actually met on... Uh, that first season of NYPD Blue. Brad, I think, directed the fifth or sixth episode the first year. He did, and then he also did the tenth episode. I had been out here, and I really liked LA, but I was still sort of a East Coaster and sort of a snob, and uh, figured, well, I'll come out and I'll make some money, and I'll be on a TV show, and then I'll go back to New York and meet my real husband. And uh, so I had a big plan. And then uh, you still have that plan. I still, well, I gotta meet re my real husband. <laughs> He caught Amy Brenneman's attention in a, in a big way. I dropped by when Greg was shooting the pilot, and without sort of drawing cliche generalizations, I, I dropped by as a visitor and looked, and here was an interesting New York actor, the guy, and here was this, and there was the girl. We were going back to New York to shoot the second batch of shows, which was episodes six through 10. The minute Brad walked on the set, I, I thought, there's somebody I can talk to. It was like very 
at first sight kind of thing. It hmm. took him a little longer to realize that. <laughs> but, <laughs> Amy had definitely taken a, a liking to, to Brad, and he was still he was still kind of figuring it out. And Amy had said to the production coordinator, "Put me next to him on the plane. You got to put me next to him, Joyce." <laughs> and she did. She did. So we had this uh, wonderful trip to New York where we got all the cards out on the table. And... <laughs> yeah, the cards on the table is of a long conversation, and Amy looks out the window and turns back and says, okay, so I'm into you. What's your problem? I didn't, I didn't know what his problem was. I was so delightful and scrumptious. Yeah, that was the beginning of the relationship <laughs> going deeper at that point. Went downstairs the next morning, 5.30 van. Where's Brad? No, Brad. And uh, said, all right, I got to get on the first van and get down there. We had actually quietly started to, to date, and of course nobody else knew uh, until my dear friend Michael Robin, who obviously was producing on the show, he and I showed up at location one morning. On the second van came Brad, and um, and he was um, struggling. He just looked at me, and he said, come here. And I wouldn't look at him, he goes, come here. He, uh, I walked up to him, and he was looking through his sides for the, for the first scene. I said, Brad? And he was like, yeah, and he wouldn't look at me. I said, did you get any sleep? And he was like... A little. And finally went, oh, no. Oh, no. And I, I just shrugged. And I said, all right. I said, well, just make sure you get this scene right. It's like, okay. But he just wouldn't look at me. Slowly but surely, people discovered that we were actually hanging out. And that ended up, you know, becoming a romance. And the two of them ended up getting married. Brad and I have been married six years. We have a baby. I mean, it is, you know, we, we call Stephen our godfather because it really was um, the beginning of my life in Los Angeles and of my career in Los Angeles. 